Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the evaluation homeomorphism for polynomial rings. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing uh, multiplicative compatibility and why the evaluation homeomorphism is going to obey multiplicative compatibility. So this is rather faint because of the pen, so I'll just go over it again. Okay, so we are in the process of um, evaluating what these two polynomials multiplied together is equal to. Okay, and I've just done a long speech uh, explaining how polynomials are actually multiplied together in the ring of polynomials, and this is all going awfully now, because I'm not I'm failing to get it over the top exactly, uh, but never mind. Okay, it's a bit of a mess. So, uh, this is how you do it. So, you split these into monomial decompositions, sums of monomials, and then you define how monomials multiply. So, the monomial AIXI uh, multiplied by the monomial BJXJ is just AI times uh, BJ, I can improve it with colour, uh, multiplied together in the coefficient ring. So, this is multiplication in the coefficient ring. You stick that in front of the power X to the I plus J, so you just add the powers together, and of course, we're assuming mean you know how to add two natural numbers together, okay? Um, uh, and then what you do is all of these monomials are going to be summed up according to the addition rule in the polynomial ring. So that's important. This addition here, this double addition, this means addition in the polynomial ring. So this isn't just symbolic addition, this is addition in the polynomial ring. You work out what the sum of all these monomials is in the polynomial ring, R adjoin X, and that will be your answer as to what these two polynomials multiplied together is equal to. And now we are taking phi of this thing, okay? And now, how can we uh, go further? Well, what we're going to use is what we've already proven, that phi is compatible additively. Now, I've got a great big sum of loads of monomials here, okay? But it is a finite sum. There's only going to be a finite number of monomials that don't have zero coefficients here, because, of course, both of these polynomials uh, have only finitely num uh, a finite number of their coefficients non-zero, because we're doing algebra, not analysis, okay? Uh, so, uh, when we multiply the two of them together, when we multiply multiply the coefficients together, that means that only a finite number of these coefficients are going to be non-zero. So this is a finite sum, okay? Now, of course, we've only proven that phi is additively compatible for two things being added together, but once you've got two things, it's very easy to generalize for an arbitrary finite string of things, okay? Because, for instance, if you've got three things added together, you can just view one thing as one thing, and then the other two things added together as the other thing, apply additive compatibility law that you've got, okay, and I, I can't really explain this without actually writing it down. So if I've got, for instance, that phi of the polynomial A plus B plus C, if I'm considering this, and I want to split it down into 5A plus 5B plus 5C, okay, what I can do is apply this rule once, so I can split it into phi of A plus phi of B plus C, like so, where I'm viewing A as being 1, polynomial, and b plus c as being another polynomial, and then of course now I can acknowledge that b and c are separate, and then split that up, and then I'll get what I wanted, okay? Uh, and you can do that an arbitrary string, uh, arbitrary finite number of times, okay? So we can certainly then um, split this into the sum over i, and I shouldn't put it there, I don't want it there, I want it down here, okay? I'll write this bit developed over there, so I'll put it like here. Okay, so it'll become the sum over i, the sum over j, where those have now changed meaning, because here they were addition in the polynomial ring, r join x. They're now going to become the green addition, just like it did over here. So they've now become green addition here. Okay, and then what we need to do is take phi of each of these monomials. Okay, so phi of ai times bj, okay, x to the i plus j. And now, of course, we just apply the definition of phi of one of those monomials. Again, I'll just colour in that multiplication there. That's already multiplication in the ring capital R. So phi of any polynomial is just taking that polynomial and evaluating it at alpha. Okay, so evaluate this monomial then at alpha. Uh, what you do is you change uh, the x to alpha the to the power of i plus j actually means now to the power of i plus j, and the multiplication here actually becomes multiplication rather than just being a symbol. Okay, so I'll now put this down here. So this will become the sum over i, the sum over j, okay, of the ai times the bj will stay there. 
like so, and then you'll have alpha to the i plus j, and remember this is now a real multiplication in the ring capital R, so this is multiplication, this is multiplication in the ring capital R, this power is in the ring capital R, and then we're performing a great big sum in the ring capital R, okay, so we've turned it into something that's totally in the coefficient ring capital R. Okay, so what we now want to do then is develop the right-hand side a bit and show that it becomes this. Okay, so let's develop the right-hand side. So firstly, let's take phi of this polynomial. Okay, so we know how that works. Uh, we'll just evaluate this at alpha. So this will become the sum over i of a i um, alpha to the i here. And of course, the sum has changed meaning. Here, we were just thinking of it as uh, being a symbolic sum, or you could have thought of it as being uh, the monomial decomposition. You don't need to, though. You can just think of it as being uh, the symbolic sum, okay? Um, and now here, it's actually the sum in the coefficient ring, capital R, okay? This has now actually become multiplication in the coefficient ring, capital R. This has become taken to the power in the coefficient ring, capital R. And then we need to multiply this in the coefficient ring, capital R, Okay, with, and I'll just put brackets around that, uh, the answer to this, okay? And of course, we're just evaluating this polynomial at alpha, so this will just become the sum over j of bj uh, alpha to the j here, where everything is now interpreted in the ring capital R. So sum in the ring capital R, multiply in the ring capital R, take to the power of j in the ring capital R. Okay, and again, I'll put brackets around that. So this is a great big sum of these terms a i uh, times alpha to the power of i, and this is a great big sum of terms b j times alpha to the power of j. Okay, now what we can do uh, is just apply distributivity in the ring capital R. So distributivity holds in the ring capital R, and hopefully you'll agree that if you do apply distributivity to that, you just need to multiply every term here with every term here, which is exactly what we've got here, and then sum up all of those terms, which is exactly what we've got here. So indeed, this is equal to this. Okay, so multiplication is indeed compatible, okay, between the polynomial ring R adjoin X and the uh, coefficient ring R. Okay, so this is all looking good. Now the final thing then that we need to prove in order to prove that this is indeed a homomorphism is that the multiplicative identity in the codomain ring, which is the polynomial ring, is mapped onto the multiplicative identity uh, in the Sorry, the multiplicative identity in the domain ring, which is the polynomial ring, uh, is mapped onto the multiplicative identity in the codomain ring, which is our coefficient ring. Okay, so we need to prove that phi of 1 is carried on to 1. Now that, of course, is very simple. Okay, when we evaluate the polynomial 1 at alpha, it does just go on to 1, because, of course, it's a constant polynomial. It has no powers of x. Okay, uh, so it's just going to go on to itself. Indeed, all constant polynomials are just going to be mapped onto themselves by any evaluation homomorphism. So, indeed, uh, the constant polynomial 1 is going to go on to itself in the coefficient ring. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, the multiplicative identity does indeed go on to the multiplicative identity. And hence, we have now proven that this evaluation map, where you take any polynomial and you evaluate it at a certain value of the uh, coefficient ring, uh, and therefore get a value in the coefficient ring, is actually a ring homomorphism. Okay, so I think we'll have a break here, a schedule break this time, uh, and in the next video what we'll do is make this a little bit more complicated, not too much more complicated, but we'll extend this to a very important concept which really uh, comes into its own when you go into field theory. Okay, you can't escape this concept when you go into field theory. Okay, so we'll study this now just to get used to it now in the context of rings, uh, but really it will become so, so important when we go on to field theory.